Yes, yes, it's the Razer 15 inch gaming laptop. You told me it's great for content creation. So let's find out. Woo! Right, tell you that champs. Now, the Razer Blade 15 gaming laptop. Now, is it a gaming laptop or can it be used for content creation? Well, let's find out. So you want to upgrade that Windows Home to Windows Pro or just get killer prices on Windows Office 2016 and cheap gaming keys, head on down to 09. Make sure you copy and paste my code from the description to get a price that's going to make you go woo! Now I still don't think the person that buys a MacBook Pro is the same person that buys a Razer gaming laptop. But a lot of you are telling me no, no, no. This is for content creation too. And of course, it would be great for content creation because it has those specs you know gtx 1070 max q eighth generation six core intel cpu you know up to 32 gigabytes of ram which is what creators want and factory calibrated displays there's three displays a 60 hertz full hd model a 144 hertz full hd model and a 100 percent adobe rgb 4k display now if you're a content creator First, I guess the 4K is the best option. It's, your battery life will suffer, but it's 100% Adobe RGB, so it has the wide color gamut. The Full HD is around 90% sRGB. They say 100, I measured about 90. It depends what tool you measure with, I guess. It's close enough to 100% sRGB and around 300 nits of brightness too. All factory calibrated, so the color accuracy is spot on and the Full HD is matte. So I have had the actual MacBook Pro in the house, the i7 and the i9, so some of these tests I'm just gonna compare it to the Mac I will do these tests on the XPS 15 eventually but the Mac benchmarks are just in here to give you a reference point so first of all I'll put up the 3d spec per view this is a 3d benchmark it tests all sorts of 3d applications check it on your own machine of course with a gtx 70 max q it's going to be great for 3d sort of work but of course if you have something that uses quadro drivers or needs quadro drivers you're better off getting a laptop workstation with a quadro gpu so if you wanted to do music production on this i did do an audition test where i just used a macro with basically just some noise reduction and normalization etc and the razor blade with the 2.2 gigahertz i7 8 750 H took 7.6 seconds and on the MacBook Pro with the 8850H which is the 2.6 it took 6.9 seconds and with the i9 it took 6.2 seconds but I doubt you're going to notice so that's a single digit performance difference there to MacBook Pros which isn't really that much I will show you the render times on Premiere Pro in a minute I also will show you how it performs in the timeline but first let's go through some other benchmarks Cinebench I got 1101 stock and 1234 undervolted compared to macbook pro 2.6 gigahertz i7 i got a thousand and one stock and i got up to 1096 with the fans on flat stick so not much difference between the two there really and with the i9 macbook pro i got 1064 so much of a much there there's not much to say there but one surprise i really did get is when i ran the puget system photoshop benchmark which you can download i'll leave links in the description i got a score of 788.2 with the Razer and with the MacBook Pro i7 it was 821. So a fair difference there. Now, of course, the MacBook Pro does have the faster CPU. It has the 2.6 versus the 2.2. But when you use the i9 and the MacBook Pro, it was even faster than that. So when it comes to Lightroom, I've done an export of 75 NEF raw files to JPEG. And it took 2 minutes and 10 seconds on the Razer and 2 minutes and 10 seconds on the Mac. That was the 2.6. With the i9, it was 1 minute and 49. So that i9, yeah, it really makes a big difference. That's like 20 seconds with the MacBook Pro. So let's get to the render times on Premiere Pro, which is probably the most important thing to me. And what you'll see there, it took nine minutes and 36 seconds with the Razer. With the XPS 15, it's nine minutes and six seconds. That has an i9, so it is a little bit faster. And with the MacBook Pro 2.6 i7, it took 10 minutes and 54 seconds. Now this is where the scores get interesting. The i9 on the XPS 15 is the fastest. But when we used hardware encoding, which uses the Intel HD graphics and the GPU as well, this is where the power of the Razer really stood out here it took five minutes and 12 seconds with hardware encoding the xps 15 took six minutes and 19 seconds and the macbook pro took eight minutes and 37 seconds now with one thing to bear in mind is the macbook pro doesn't have an nvidia graphics card so it cannot use any cuda 
So obviously the NVIDIA powered laptops are better in this regard. So that's like nearly a minute faster the Razer is over the XPS 15 and that's down to the GTX 1070 of course. So this would be great for content creation, especially if you get the 4K display. Even if you use the full HD, it will still be great for content creation. It's got the power there to do it. The only thing I would say is music production, maybe not. A lot of music production software actually uses multi-calls now every now and then. So the fans may kick in and it will get a bit loud. So if you do have heavy music production where you're doing like EQ and compression on the fly and it's really taxing those CPUs, maybe it's a bit loud for music production, but everything else has the calibrated displays 100% adobe rgb so you got that color gamut there for your color work you got the raw power there and yes it'll be a great content creator's device so let me know down there in the comments would you use this for content creation and let's go have a look how it performs with premiere pro in the timeline i even test some 8k footage so if you like this video please give me a thumbs up i'll keep on making these content creation videos if you're not around here please subscribe and i'll catch you in the next one tally ho Righto, tell you there chaps, let's see how this Razer Blade 15, a 2018 model, with the 8th generation Intel 6 core processor, the 8750H, which is the 2.2 gigahertz. So this is a 4K project, it's what I test all my laptops with. Um, this thing laughs at 4K, has a GTX 1070 uh, Max-Q, and that's eight gigabytes of RAM there, and you'll see the render times. Mate, the render times are awesome on this. But anyway, so this 4K project, just trust me, 4K, it just like eats it alive. You can see it scrolls like butter. I mean, with these laptops now, and even this one here, this Razer, you know, it's like full HD content from laptops a couple of years ago, you know what I mean? They were struggling to handle full HD content. Now they just handle 4K content like butter. So this is amazing power here. You can see it's just like butter, look. So you have the drop frame indicator up here and I'm not gonna spend too much time on this. I'll just show you, it plays through all the high resolution photos. You can see the green marker right there. It's not gonna drop, we're playing at full 4K with color correction, I can guarantee you that. It does not drop frames at all and I'll just go to here. And there you can see we are playing with color correction, 4K footage. This is log footage with a LUT applied and color correction. And it, as you can see there, green all the way, green all the time. It just smashes 4K. Now, I'll see if we can um, go into the colors and I can do some color correction on the fly. I mean, there's not many laptops that do this, but um, we'll see what we can do. Uh, I don't know if this is long enough, but I'll just click on that. And we'll go to the curves and we'll press play and look. Oh, no, it drops frames a little bit when you do some color correction, but um, I mean, this is just being stupid. Look, oh, yes, didn't drop frames at all. Look at that. Woo, on the fly, color correction. <laughs> it's not even dropping frames. Look at it. That's amazing, it just dropped frames at the end. That's amazing. All right, let's see some 8K content. Let's see how we go there. All right, let's load up some 8K content. So this is 8K content straight out of a red camera. So so it is raw red camera. And as you'll see at full, there's no hope of playing this. Even a full desktop will not play it at full. Eh, it's not, yeah, I didn't expect it would. A full desktop won't even do that, but look at it. I mean, if you really want to be a thrill seeker, you could edit that. That's pretty good. Look at it. It's not like a slideshow. That's actually not too bad. At full. Yeah, anyway, let's go to half. So raw content, let's go half. So we can play to half. Or for a little bit. Okay, so let's scrub at half. The scrubbing's much better at half. And as you can hear, the old thing's going to take off here, but um, you can hear it's quite loud. But all gaming laptops are loud, and that just shows you how much you have to push the system just to play 8K footage. All right, so half, you can scrub, you can chop, no problems. But if you want to actually play it back at half, yeah, it's not. It is dropping frames, so. All right, let's go to quarter. And this is raw footage again, I'll stress. There you go, quarter, ooh. Surely not. 
Yes, yes, have a look at that. Quarter, 8K, is it going to play through it all? Ooh, come on, wait for it. Woo, yes. There, you can play it a quarter. So you can edit at quarter, 8K. Of course, once you start deploying effects and that, whatever, but still, you know, you could just drop your raw footage in here and start editing at quarter. And it looks good at quarter because it is 8K footage. So that still looks great at quarter and look smooth like butter there and it plays it no problems so you wouldn't have to convert to ProRes or Cineform or whatever like that you can actually edit raw 8k footage from the red camera so let's see how she does with 8k footage um, now this is uncompressed to Cineform similar to ProRes or whatever or DNXR whatever the hell that is from Thingo let's see if we can play this at full Okay, it'll scroll like butter. And this is what you do, you uncompress the footage, it's much easier on the system. But there's only one laptop that has been able to play back this 8K footage, um, uncompressed Cineform, at full. And that's the XPS 15 with the i9. So can this one do it? Let's find out. No. Okay, I'll just, let's, I think sometimes they just lag at the start and then they kick in. I don't know why it does that. It's just a common thing I see. No, it's not going to play it, no. It's definitely not playing it at full. And this is the Cineform. 100% Yeah, it is the Cineform because it has the sound there. Yep. So, at full, XPS 15 is still the only laptop that can play it at full. Let's go to half. It should play it at half. Let's go. No. Hmm, this is interesting. I don't know why this is, but um, I would have, I would expect, yeah, there we go. That might have been a bit cached there, but um, that's what I would expect. I would expect it to play it at half. And yeah, it's smooth as butter. 8K at half. That's what I expect, but yeah, the XPS 15 is the only one that can play it at full with the i9. That's the Cineform uncompressed footage. So there you go. Well, what do you think? Let me know down there in the comments. I'd like to thank you for watching. Until next time, tally ho.